Insanity Pod, episode 11. We got Teddy Slugs and Willow Colossus in the building. Yo, all the way here from the States. Um, how are you guys fighting New Zealand so far? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I got my haircut, bro. I got a cheeky. Hey, I'm uh, feeling real show different. soon, dude. Bro, I love New Zealand. I would live here, honestly. Every time I come here, I'm like, I should just stay, bro. Yeah, you weren't here too long ago either. Like four or five months ago, maybe. Yeah. Do you warn Teddy about anything about New Zealand? Warned him? Not necessarily, but I was like, so meat pies, so you gotta do this. Oh, I had a meat pie. Yeah. yeah. Mince and cheese. Mince and cheese. Mince and cheese, yeah. The steak and cheese, you gotta yeah, get steak the and cheese. Yeah, yeah, hey, no, Semper told me mince and cheese, and that was the, that was the go. Semper's tripping, bro. <laughs> That's steak, steak and, and cheese. cheese is way better, bro. Yeah. How did you guys end up um, linking up and making music together from the start? I know you guys live together now too, and you've released a bunch of songs together, so how did that relationship? I think it uh, started with Calum, yeah, with, yeah. with uh, Sempra. Me and Sempra were making songs on Discord, and uh, when we did The Fallen, he was like, oh, Warlord Colossus is hopping on it too. And I was like, oh shit. Like, right, who is that? Who's that? Because <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm under a rock all the time. Yeah. And then he joined in the Discord, and we started talking about how bad tap water is for you, and. Oh uh, yeah, it's not too good? It's not too good for you over in America. Don't drink tap water. <laughs> yeah. Don't drink tap water. Is that a common thing? You just don't drink I it? think um, everyone in their own respective zone or country will be like, yeah, our tap water's safe, it's clean, our city cleans it. But your house pipes are not clean, bro. <laughs> you, like, people are flushing stuff in the toilets and stuff and like you're just drinking it. You know, There's no filter on that. Yeah, definitely not. Check your water, bro. Pour, pour your tap water and then get it checked and then see what you've been drinking. Bro, you'll yeah. see floaties in it. Where I'm, where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. And when the government's making money off you guys going to hospital, you know, you don't have the health care and shit. <laughs> yeah, so. bro. You gotta pay. You gotta pay to win. It's pay to win in America. It's conspiracy theories. <laughs> two, yeah. minutes, two minutes in. So tell us about Spokane, like. Yeah. Real small town sort of vibes. It, honestly, I'm from Seattle, so, but it reminds me of like a smaller Seattle. Um, Everyone kind of knows each other there. Like, uh, like if you're if if you grew up there, people yeah. will like you know know each other. But I'm a transplant, so and so is he. <laughs> a transplant. Yeah, we transplanted. Yeah, he's yeah. from all over. We're the not place. from there, but like, it's like quiet there. It's like um, there's not really like a scene like this at all. Yeah. Aside what from we're doing or what we do with um Sunco Nick. And uh, everything we do is just like completely independent. So when people meet us there and they see what we're doing, they're like super confused because it's yeah. like out of nowhere. They're not used to that. But um, it's like a quiet, calm place for me. It's yeah. actually in my astrological coordinates <laughs> <laughs> to live there, I swear to God. Who, who told you that? Would you look it up? I looked it up. You know, so yeah. you have like your astrology of your sun sign, your moon sign. Yeah. You can look at where you live on the planet. Um, what's it called? What's the name of that shit? I don't know what it's called exactly, but you can see where you would live to get the most abundance in life, you know? You feeling abundant? Yes, dude. As soon as I got there, we were like song, 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 video, this move, this move, this show, this show, all this more money, all these more views. My monthly listeners shot up. It's crazy. This fool texted me at three in the morning, bro. Straight up, he was like, come upstairs right now. I fucking do, 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 run up and he's like, I'm in the fucking coordinates, bro. And he's got this map, this gigantic map open. And, and I was smoking a cigarette. Like, I was like, dude. <laughs> he's like straight through. Like our house is in the, like. Yeah, like if you know, if you get a GPS yeah. and it gives you actual coordinates yeah. with like three latitude, longitude, it was at his house. It was right on it. And we all saw it and we were all like. That's kind of weird. Were you running a VPN or no? No, <laughs> it's right it there. Uh, well, no, 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 because mine was in like Virginia somewhere. Uh, no, yeah, we like, I ran the map and then I checked where we lived and yeah. then I like found out that it was in the same spot, so. So you're not originally from there. Mm -mm. Is your family from Puerto Rico? Well, that's my whole family's background. Yeah. We're all Puerto Rican, but my mom and dad were raised in New Jersey with their families from Puerto Rico. And I'm just, I'm full Puerto Rican, but I was born in, uh, in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, on an army base. How did how'd you find traveling around with that, with your family? Man, you don't think about it as a kid, but um, you just get used to it. You learn yeah. how to make friends like really fast. Yeah. That can be any type of person's friend, just because I've seen and been around so much, you know? Yeah. You get like an adaptability skill. Yeah. Kind of learn um, like uh, how to do a lot by yourself, you know, yeah. if that makes sense. I travel a lot by myself now and I'm just super used to it. What else do you think you learned? like through that 
Um, was a lot of musical influences in any of the cities you were living in previously? Well, where I was born, it was like on Tennessee and the Kentucky border. That's where I first got exposed to rap. So like nearly, you know, like a lot of funk came from the Memphis scene, but what I was exposed to is rap battles when I was really little. And my older brother, uh, he would like rap on a mic with all these like older kids. And I would just watch and they'd be like, that's cool, what is going on? And me as a kid, I would like bounce on the bed and try to put words together. And then years later, it just became relevant. So it was cool. Yeah. And what about yourself, Titty? Were you, have you always been musical? Oh yeah. Um, my dad, he's, well, my dad and my grandpa were musicians. So growing up, my dad was always in like local, like punk, like indie pop sort of bands. It like progressed, but um, when I was a little kid, I was always like, like grew up in like a studio sort of environment when I was at my dad's house and it was like, it was like really eye opening. And um, so that, and then Tony Hawk Pro Skater, one, two, three, and four, like that kind of gave me like my hip hop, like roots sort of deal, you know? Yeah, so that's, really that's crazy how like some of the games you play when you're a kid on like PlayStation, like the soundtracks are so iconic and it kind of yeah. shapes what you listen to. Like I remember on Need for Speed Most Wanted, there's this bullet for my Valentine song. And from there I went and bought my first CD like for the album, so like. Had your emo phase. <laughs> yeah, that was in my fucking, yeah, middle what phase. Just just screaming fire, that's, <laughs> that's it. Kind of blood, like, yeah, cool. this fool. Crazy. Yeah. I found like Quasimodo and like Mad Lib and like Atmosphere through Tony Hawk Pro Sk and Gangstar. That was like a huge one for me. Um, Man, how I got into like the rap, like actual like 90s rap was I worked at Publix. I worked in a deli. That's a grocery store in America. So I worked in the deli side and I would have to do the dishes in the back for like a whole hour. So I would, I would have a speaker and I put on Big L Radio on Pandora and it would cycle through all of like the best 90s rappers because they would like algorithmically algorithm put them together and then I just like like that flow that easy 90s flow bounce and then I started like man I could do that I could do that you know how did you guys discover like funk and that like what you're doing now the first people that I knew of like original funk was um was a devilish trio yeah doom shop because and they were like I was like oh they're from where I was born that's like that's fire that's like Tennessee that's that's cool and then um and then I think it like kind of started reviving in a new way recently, but that was when I first got exposed to them, and I thought it was cool. They're from where I'm from. That was the first. Um, that was like the first like funk that I heard too. It was like, I was in like a van with a bunch of people, and like somebody was playing Suicide Boys, and this like other fool was like, "Oh, have you heard of Devilish Trio? Like, you should play Devilish Trio." And he like passed him the ox, and I remember like, cause I had heard Suicide Boys before, and I was like, "Oh, this is ill." And then when they passed the ox and put Devilish Trio on, I was like, God, I was like, what the fuck is this? This is sick. And then like, I remember like, I was probably like in my notes, like in the back of the car, back of the van, hella drunk, like fucking typed in Devilish Trio. And then I like went home and I like, just like went down the rabbit hole. And that's how I found like Doom Shop um, and like the whole like underground funk scene, what it was like back in 2017. Cause it's so different now. It's like, yeah. Back then it was like low fi I don't even know how to describe it. It most people <clears throat> say it's not even funk, you know? Like I've heard multiple Doom Shop members like back then being like, What the fuck is funk? you know? And it's like, what is funk? So Who are some of the artists you guys think um, kinda took that sound and took it to like the next level that is still around now? Probably well, I mean, Semper definitely. Semper definitely. Um, I say when I was coming up in, in like my time of the SoundCloud era, I noticed that Freddie Dread would like yeah, yeah. take that sound and make it more modern and actually like he's the one that I noticed like push it up and then Suicide Boys in their own way. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but they were the ones using those samples yeah. and like that, those are the two. That's when I started making music like around that era. And when I found Suicide Boys, I was like, oh, that's, that's fire. That reminds me of like Devilish Trio, but it, um, not in a bad way, but it sounds like uh, cleaner. Cause I think old school funk is supposed to sound like kind of like gritty and like underground. And Suicide Boys sounded like, just like bright and like still dark, you know? It's polished, it's more polished. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like on the mix and master specifically, like those older 
gen songs sound like this for a reason, like like if it's on a tape or something. And I but I like polished and clean with the same genre, same feel. That's what I that's what I try to do now. You know, when I first started like making funk, like everyone was like had that style. It was like how bit crushed you can get your vocals. Like exactly. everything in like 2017, 2017, 2018, it just sounded like very, like people were like trying to get it gritty, you know? And I feel like now people are trying to get it more polished. Mm -hmm. so. I like that. Titty. So, oh, that's it, you go. No, fuck, no, it's all good, man. <laughs> Pretend I'm not even here. Pretend I'm not even here. <laughs> I even forgot what I was gonna say, so. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't, dude. I got yeah. first. Yeah, and no. oh, no, I forgot he said. No, <laughs> like, growing up, like, musically with that scene, was it easy to find like-minded like, like -minded people to work with you, or was it quite a gatekeep kind of community that underground or? Uh, I don't know. I feel like when you're in the underground rap scene, everyone and anybody, a lot of the people that roam that will, like, I will work and do and say anything to work with anyone to get my numbers higher. Yeah. So I think, in, especially in America and in, in the underground, you'll have randoms just hitting you up and then you can form relationships like that. I don't move like that at all, yeah. but because um, I like to like make music with like family, like Teddy, like that's my brother, Kalen, that's my brother, AK, that's my brother. Like I'll make songs with them any, any day of the week and then that's just how I move now. So I don't really care about yeah. that essentially, like connecting with a lot of other rappers because I think the more successful you get, the harder it becomes to find genuine people in your life. Yeah. So it's like... How sick is it that, like, you know, you're with TD and Simpra and you guys are all just right. doing crazy and, like, but you guys are so like-minded as well? Yeah, it's sick, man. I was thinking about that, like, just being, like, as soon as I got here, I was like, damn, I'm here with Teddy. Yeah. Miranda's here and Caleb's here. And, like, everybody, I'm, like, we're doing this. We're getting paid. Like, this is fire. I feel really grateful. I run gratitude lists in my head, like, all the time, every day. Yeah, it's real sick to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty early on, you went on tour with some pretty notable artists, wasn't it? Um, Suicide Boys and uh, it was um, it was Shakewell, Germ, and Ramirez, and I opened for Puya at one point. And that was three yeah. shows, and that was um, I think it was called the Big Bad Gorilla Tour yeah. or something like that. It was a long yeah. time ago, man. Yeah. What was it like being around those artists at a, such an early point in your career? And do you think they kind of shaped you and the way you move in the in industry to this day? Yeah, I mean, that whole thing changed my life. I quit my job to do that. I was working at a barber shop. I was working for my dad, actually. And um, he was like always make, trying to get me to come to work more because I wanted to make music more and not be at work. And he was like, I was like, oh, I got to go. I got to go for a week. I got to go on this tour. Like, he's, um, Puyo's brother is like letting me do this because um, somebody got sick or something. And then like, I got my chance. And then he's like, yeah, well, I think he wanted, you know, he wanted what's best for me, like what he thought back then. He's like, oh, well, if you leave, you're fucking fired then, whatever, you know? And then I was like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> and then I did it and it like, it kind of just like verified in my head, like that with this, the dream was possible, you know, that it was like, I did a show, it was sold out, it was like 400 people there and I moved the crowd, like I've never moved anyone before and it was like, like I had like a taste. I'm like, man, I could do this by myself one day. And like, not that it changed anything for me aside getting good footage. Cause you know, doing one show is not gonna change your life necessarily. But the, the keep that, that constant push in your head, like just keep going even when it's hard. Just keep going even when it's hard. Cause being a rapper or a musician in general is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I've done so many things and seen so much shit, like ups and downs and ups and downs, especially in, in the music career that I've been in that is like at that point I was like oh yeah my dreams can come true like hard work will pay off like just keep going and that was it because I even at that point I had talked to Suicide Boys through an email I tried to sign to them like being like a young kid I'm like listen to my music please like and they were like bro we don't usually reply to this but you have potential keep going and then I end up on one of the shows kind of close to their realm and it's like in my head I'm like I have potential keep going and I just kept that mentality until right now, and now we're here. What about you, Titi? Do you have any like awakening moments like that? Mm. Where you're just like, yo, I can make this, I can do this, or I'm going to do this? Well, I have, me and Caleb have a pretty crazy story, you know, um, or Sempra. Um, when we first made our first song together, he was like, yo, like, we're different, you know, like, 
not in like a cocky way. He was just like our energy. I feel like, yeah. like in the scene at the time, it was like we were like coming, like we were like recording pretty aggressive music for the time, and it was different. Um, but he sent me a bunch of messages one night. He was like, he was like, bro, in like a year we're gonna be like this far, and like he predicted pretty much like everything. And at first, I was like. I was like, oh, you know, I thought it was just like chats, you know, I thought I was like, oh yeah, like we got this, bro. Like, and I was like, yeah, yeah. it's not like I didn't believe, but I was just like, you know, and then a year passes by and I was like, I thought about it. I was like, holy shit, he predicted this, he predicted that, he predicted that. He's so, um, but I think after we made the fall in and that kind of took off and people were really hyped, like not, not only on, just on my verse, but like the whole song you know once it hit a mill it was just like people were like oh you got to do more of that the yelling screaming stuff because that was like probably one of the first songs i ever screamed on you know because yep. before i was just kind of doing like laid back like bit crushed funk vocals type of thing but once that hit a million i was like it planted the seed i was like oh yeah we i can definitely like you know take this like however far i want to it just depends on the work that i put in you know because that was another thing that Kayla, or Sempra and Warlord have always told me, and, and my friend Coast too, like the more work you put in, the more you're going to get out of it, you know? This isn't like you make a song and like la di da di da you just blow up someday. I mean, some, sometimes it happens like that, but, you know. So I, I'd say that, like, the fall and seeing that first million, like, really, like, juiced me up yeah it juiced me up dude i was like holy shit i just remember sitting there and just being like a million times have you know a million people or a million plays have heard this like song that's crazy to me what were you you and calum's numbers at before like when you guys first linked up and before the fallen um we didn't even have spotify's yet we had was that before death eater was that when he was death eater it was when he was death eater yes yeah, long yeah, time was, ago yeah it was and if we did have Spotify's it was like like probably like nah like less than a thousand monthly listeners you know SoundCloud was like I didn't even realize I was like Spotify I was like I'm gonna upload my music on SoundCloud <laughs> you know yeah. So, yeah don't do that new no artists yeah. don't focus on SoundCloud please yeah. don't and how have you found like meeting him online and then him coming over to the states and then coming back over here is it quite a full circle thing Oh yeah, it's definitely full circle. But by the time we first met each other, like in person, it didn't feel like, as soon as he got off the plane, I just looked at him and I was like, all right, let's go, let's go get a drink in us. Cause it was just like, we had made so many songs over Discord and like, we would just like pop on Discord and like, we would all have like, our like video cameras on, you know, I spent so much time. It's so weird. Like the new age of like the internet is crazy. Like I just seen him so much that like seeing in person, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then we just went and got a drink. It, there was no like awkward stage. It was yeah. just like straight off to the races, you know? Yeah. Same with you. Yeah. First time I met him, I, um, we, we were at Seaside Oregon Beach, bro. Oregon Beach. Bro. Oregon Cannon, Beach. Bro, near Cannon Beach. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, we had been yawning forever on Discord, so. So I noticed in all of your guys' videos and a lot of your photos, you both wear like masks. Are you guys trying to hide something? Because I can see your faces now. I didn't come. Around. I didn't start wearing a mask until I met until I met Age, uh, Warlord. I think it's like uh, I don't know. I just like. I feel like it's a part of the art. It's a part of like when I make a new song, how that song has its image now. Yeah. I want to portray, like I'm painting. You know, like this is how this looks to me. Except the painting is like the photo shoot, the music video, and the song. And that's yeah. like, everything is together and I push it out. I think that's a very important part of like being an artist and you're doing that to like such a high level, both of you guys with like the image. Um, is there any other ways you guys are looking to push your image or through videos in the future? I just want to improve the videos a lot and yeah. be more consistent. But like, like I said, it's like art. It's like, I want it to be this whole portrayal of like, imagery and emotion and just like I have if I have something important to say in the songs that we put out I want the video to be just as like as good you know just as like visually striking you know and like I, I watch a lot of cinematic movies I watch tons of movies old ones new ones and like I study them so I can like get ideas constantly 
Oh, you'll, he'll, he'll fully be like, oh, you see that cut there? Yeah. They, sw <laughs> they switch cameras to this sort of lens and like, he's like on it. You're quite involved, like hands on when you're making videos with the oh, directors, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I've edited them and then handed them off for like effects and clean up and stuff. Cause I'm not too good at it, but. You've written pretty much all the videos yeah, all you've the, done. We did yeah. that, the one that we did. All the scripts, the storylines, and the storyboarding, and the costumes, yeah. and the extras. Like I, I do all that oh, stuff. That's yeah, that's it's just like part of it. It's, yeah. it's just even, like, even in New Zealand, like last time and this time, talking about videos, like you're very, you're almost like producing it yourself, and like you feel very hands on. And I think that's very important for you to make it come across the most authentic way to your music. Yeah, I only like making a song when. I feel like I need to, or I feel like it's important. Like I said, like I, you have, I want to say something, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't just rap about anything for no reason. Like everything is like shit that I've gone through and seen. So mm -hmm. I don't know, the, the video, just what have movies and life have done for me? I'm like, what if I can put that in a two minute video, you know? Just as beautiful, you know, that's mm -hmm. the idea. Do you guys both feel like there's a deeper meaning to your music? Either track by track or just in general? I think the lyrics, don't like personally for me not as much but i think like the emotion and energy put behind the lyrics does it's like you know if i'm in a like a pissed off mood like i'm gonna probably scream a little bit louder do you make better songs when you're pissed off mm, no i don't i don't because i start like <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i start i start getting but I, like I, I think the like the general mood, like writing wise and recording, or actually maybe possibly there's been some verses that I've done that have came out like really good and you know Semper Adrian's been like yo. <laughs> no yeah we we when we pull off the screaming I notice that we both get mad in the in the basement, and, like some there I'll just like jump up and I'll just be like fuck. <laughs> and I like try to start pushing it out or like he'll really be mad and I'll be like just record it real quick and oh, like and, and, there's, really? and there's like tense but it's like okay because we're like brothers I just he, he's always like I'm sorry if I was mad and I'm like it didn't affect me it's just like it is okay like you know bro like the last thing like when I'm like pissed off about something and he's like bro you should record right now I'm like that's the last thing I want to hear but then I do and then I'm like Thank you, bro. I'm sorry. Do you ever sorry. just push his buttons on purpose and then like <laughs> throw him in the throw him in the studio? I think I'm good at chilling him out, yeah, honestly. Yeah, definitely. What's your guys like preferred setting for like recording a track? Are you guys quite similar, or do you guys have different? It's the basement, dude. The basement. Yeah. Is that where it happens? That's where it happens. Yeah. Generally, I feel like like we'll wake up in the morning and it, this one we won't even have a plan. I'll just be like drinking coffee or like he'll be drinking pre-workout because he's buff neck look at him <laughs> and he'll be like he'll, he'll be like i got a beat idea and i'm like okay and then we'll go downstairs and make the beat and it just like ends up like like maybe like an hour later we have like a skeleton or a rough draft of a song and i'm like damn that just happened like it was nothing yeah we made war slugs and it was like i was like hey i have an idea for drums he laid down the drums and then i hopped on the machine and i was like this melody, my, I don't know what I'm doing as much as they do. So I'm just like playing around with sound, but I know it sounds good. I feel like my ear is very high level. So then I found like the, that, uh, with the growling, the throat singing, it was like, Ugh. and then I was like, ooh. And then I just put those together. And then I'm like, Teddy, make this better. And then, and that was it. And <laughs> yeah, you gotta, yeah, I mean, you do give yourself credit, but you gotta give yourself more credit. Cause that, that's like, that's like uh, just as much of a part, like, cause he has like a, he has the brain for it. Like if it sounds yeah. like, if it sounds like if something is like a spark, like he's, oh, that's it, that's yeah. it, that's it, you know? It's and like that's the, just as important. The knocked loose guy says, yeah. I'm like, I don't know how to push the buttons, but I know what sounds good to like, I'm, I think professional, like high quality and what's melodic. I feel like I'm really good at melody. So then I try to push that when we are working together. Is this something you've learned over time or do you feel like you always had that like spark with like certain things? I feel like I've um, always had an ear for like a specific pickiness of what I want to rap on. And then I'll, when I find like something that's perfect, like that song will always change my life. Cause I'm like, this is perfect. And then my brain follows and then I'm like, I'm gonna make the best song I've made to date. And then I sit on that idea, manifest that, and then push it out. And that, it's just all that spark of the right sound. So I search for that every time we're touching any DAW that we're using. And he's, not, five at him. 
he's not afraid to say, like say like that shit is whack, you know, like, and like I appreciate it because like we'll be making a beat and he's like, nah, that's that's not it, you know, and it, it's always like. It always gets better, you know, like with constructive criticism between us both. I feel like, like feeding off each other. It's like, it's like, nah, like not necessarily that. Do this, and then it always just gets, it gets better, and it builds up into something that's like, yeah. what we both envisioned. I know when to let an idea go too, because yeah. we have times where I'm like, no, it needs to sound like this, and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, forget it, forget it. Let's just keep going, <laughs> bro. We'll fully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are tense moments too because like the idea is fresh and i'm like i don't understand yeah i gotta learn the program more too but that's how i learned when you were gone and i recorded myself is because of everything that we've sat there and done because i've never used logic i was always using ableton or fl and then all the the boys started using logic and it sounds really clean so i just learned how to do it just because i was there logic is the best bro for vocals Everything's like got its advantages. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it's like, you know, like you can give a recipe to like a shitty cook, and he's probably gonna come out with a shitty meal. So like, if you you know, a good cook can make something just as good with FL or whatever. Logic just works for me. You know, been on Reaper, Garage Band, yeah. Logic, Ableton, hey, FL. FL for beats though. Chill out. Yeah, the form the formula now is FL Studio. Make the beat. Record your vocals on Logic and mix and master on Logic, and then put it out. Yeah. That's like the formula. Sh shout out Cloudy Main and shout out like fully Sempra because without those two, like I would not like like Cloudy Main is what gave me like okay, this is how I like make a beat, and then Sempra was like no 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 no, this is how you make it slap because Cloudy Main wasn't giving out too much sauce because he's like you know, but he's a he's a good dude. So how did you kind of develop and discover? Um, the different variations in your vocals. Yeah, you guys throw games crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> he was waiting for that one, so uh, yeah, he's been sitting on that, baby. It's time for a cheeky one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember I got the idea from, from Suicide Boys. It was that song. It was, um, I no longer fear the razor guarding my heel. And I noticed when... Uh, I don't know if it was Ruby or Scream, but they came in with a verse. And I noticed that there was like a high, singy voice and a low tone. And I was like, oh, they're doing two different voices. That, that's interesting. And that sounded really good to my ear. Like it, it hit that, that thing I was talking about earlier, that, that perfect sound. And I was like, oh, if I just start stacking my voice and then like maybe it'll sound good. And then I, I remember I did a show in LA at one point. I met Kill Station. And I was like, how does your shit sound like that? And he was like, man, I do like 20 layers. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna start layering my shit. And then obviously they have to be different voices. So I started trying to change like every angle and sound of how I approached one layer. So I, my idea in my head was like different voice, different voice, different voice, different voice, and then try to clean it up, you know? That's nice. And Melissa Cross Ooh, with the vocal Shout out lessons. Melissa Cross, bro. She, she like, I hit her up and I was like, it hurts when I do certain barks or something. And she's like, do this, 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 take this DVD, study this and, and try that and then try. And then, and then I was like, ugh, 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 ugh. and then I was like, hey, hey, hey. And like switching my shit around and it didn't hurt as much. And like, and that shit was a game changer. Bro, Melissa Cross is a legend. She she's a vocal. A, she's a vocal coach. Yeah, like a been in the coach. scene, been in like the metal core, like the whatever, you know, death metal like scene forever. Um, a lot of vocalists that like are like legends today have learned from her. And it's so easy like live and stuff to ruin your vocals when you're doing aggressive yeah. tones. I still and... lose my voice all the time. Yeah. I'm oh, still yeah. working on it, man. <laughs> like, you, God. You, like, you, pl you go to play shows and you like plan, you like plan for like, okay, I'm not gonna go too hard. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then like, as soon as the first song goes, it like comes on, you're, everything goes out the window and you're just like, ah, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and you just fully shred your vocals like immediately. No, not fully. I think but. the best way is to, to drink hot tea, use honey and do your fucking warm ups. Like if I did my warm ups and then I'd make sure like, don't use your throat, use your belly, send the voice over. I need to not be affected here. That's like the main idea that I got from Melissa and like any other YouTuber that I've watched that's like a professional screamer. And to 
lastly, let the mic do the work. I can't, you can't compete with $50,000 electronical equipment trying to be loud, but that mic is there to project. So I don't, we don't have to send it, you know, but there's so many people, it's like, fuck, like I just, I want to be louder than these speakers because it's like the energy I'm feeding off of these people, you know, but I'm working on that, that little balance. What's your guys' experience with like performing live? Have you done a lot of shows? Like we did that, that tour yeah. um, last year. Tour. How was that performing for the first time out of the country? And getting a real taste of like New Zealand culture and like some small towns and it was yeah. fucking cool, man. It was super cool. I the first show, like I think, like said it for me, and I was like, oh, like this is sick, like this is awesome, and everyone like treated me really well. But um, I'm used to performing, man. I'm, I might have done a hundred shows by now. I feel like very egotistical, like might sound saying this, but I feel like the best performer, like. I know, like I, Teddy kills it, AK kills it, Kalem kills it. We're all really amazing. And I, I just feel like it's this energy that you like put out and like they'll follow you the whole time if you're really confident about your words, your delivery and engagement and just being comfortable up there. And after like a hundred shows, like that'll just come to anybody, you know? How much of a body of work did you guys have before you started performing live? I started performing maybe, I've, I had two songs out, oh, yeah. and I'll just go do shows in Miami with two songs. Dude. So you were just like ready. You was like, I want to perform this shit live. Yeah. Did that change how you guys make songs performing after performing? The last show that I played, oh, definitely. Um, the last show I played was in L.A. with Sempra, uh, Savage Gas, Lil Bubblegum, Kamara, Cisco, and. Um, before I, before it was, because I didn't have my own set. I was just playing with Sempra. We were going to play a couple songs, and then he, he, he fit one of my songs in the middle of his set. But um, I was sitting on the stairwell, like, um, kind of like stage side, um, back in the green room. And I seen Savage Gas and Kamara, and I was like, oh, I want to come out with you guys on stage. And he, Savage Gas and Kamara were like, oh yeah come on stage with us here's some water just throw it on people and i was like okay sick and i went out there and i like i heard how like they they you don't always have like for me like i learned i don't always have to be screaming in my songs you know to like bring that energy because um gasper savage gasp you know he doesn't necessarily always scream or he's not screaming in his songs but like when it's come showtime it's like that's those those yells and screams come out anyways so it's like the energy is still there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th I'd say that like definitely changed. The, the two shows that I played before that one were with, uh, ran by Sunco Nick, Children of the Sun. Children of the Sun, shout out. <laughs> Children of the Sun, th th that's, that's my guy. Um, we didn't have as good of a, uh, like a sound sy system. And I come from like the hardcore scene. Like I was always, like growing up, I was playing in like hardcore bands. And um, so like I've played like hundreds of shows like in a hardcore band and like that sort of setting. So it was like when I went to go play like the rap show and like the sound system wasn't like as good. It was just like, it was a little bit underwhelming for me. Cause I was like, I'm used to that like snare drum and kick just like slapping my f cheeks back, yeah. you know? So <laughs> pause, pause, pause. But anyways, yeah, no, you'll know if you go to a hardcore show, you'll feel that shit in your chest. Yeah, you gotta go like there. Like, <laughs> you'll be like, oh, oh my shit. God. Like, or, or you just start swinging on somebody. So, you see how I didn't flinch? Because I knew he wouldn't, because I trust <laughs> yeah. him. <Yeah. laughs> nah, first show, first hard, for, I took him to his first hardcore, like his first real hardcore show. And I was like, just like, watch yourself, right? Like, we show up, we like walk in the door, come down, like we go down into the pit, and immediately somebody just gets spin kicked in their fucking oh. shit. He just, goes like this. Just, he just oh. fucking slumps, he just fucking slumps over, gets knocked out, and, and, and Warlord's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, that's not even worth it, bro. Cause you could go to jujitsu, you could go to boxing, like you could have all this experience, but you just like, you're bumping a song and then <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fun. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. So I, I think like going forward, it's like bringing that energy, like of a hardcore show to a rap show. That's what I've always tried to do, you know? I feel like weirdly, that's like a form of sparring. Cause like, yeah. 
they go there for that, you know? They, that's a part of the culture of that, especially like from what... Like, yeah, yeah, and some of them were mouthpieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mouthpieces and gloves. <clears throat> if I went to... Like, yeah, that's like the energy I bring when I go to practice, you know, at yeah. jiu-jitsu or, or whatever I'm going to go do. I'm put a mouthpiece in, I'm, I'm going to get hit. But there's, like, a, a reason, you know? My friend Spooky, he, he plays in this band, uh, War Crime. They're from uh, Spokane. He wears a mouthpiece, and he's his name is Spooky for a good reason. But I've seen that full piece so many people in, <laughs> and it like like when I when I first moved to Spokane, like I'd been to a, tons of hardcore shows, obviously, and like I never like wore a mouth guard. And he was like, "Bro, you need to get yourself a mouth guard." And we went and got a mouth guard, and I like just like seeing him mosh is just insane, bro. Like you better duck. Shout out Spooky from Spokane, yeah. Jay. Shout out 509. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, bro, Spooky is... Do you think we should get mouthpieces for um, Rage, Rage Cage? Cage? You might want to, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. bring that, that same energy he yeah. was just talking about. Titty, I've been keeping you stocked up on um, Cheekies. Oh, cheekies, bro, these things are wonderful. Yeah. What's your honest thoughts on them? Honest thoughts, though? Oh, smooth, bro. Like, I be sipping these and like... You, like I, I don't know the first time I drank them I drank like four of them and I was like walking down the stairs I was like holy smokes fool I'm fucked up yeah. <laughs> straight up this cheeky's got me feeling real <laughs> reeky right now <laughs> I paid him so much to say that no, he, didn't, he did not bro I've been slamming cheeky's the whole time I was here you guys seen it on the story honestly like what a good name though like that's clever, bro. Yeah. And it just tastes like iced tea. Like I can't tell. Yeah. But I'm just, slowly just getting drunk. It up. Do you guys got anything like this back home? Uh, I don't know. Twisted tea. Not, not that matters. Like if we had cheekies <laughs> back in the the U.S., bro. Like, I would die for this drink, bro. <laughs> on God. On God. Like I would literally <laughs> rob. I would <laughs> rob somebody for a cheeky. I'm not about to sell you guys. <laughs> no, bro. I, straight up, I would rob somebody for a cheeky in America, bro. If I seen him with a cheeky in their hands, that shit is mine. Just happened to get sponsored by Cheeky, yeah. bro. <laughs> that shit is mine. So what's coming up next for you guys? We're just gonna perform Saturday, and we're working on a song right now with uh, with Semper actually, yeah. and we're, we're in a very good vibe with it. So oh. I can't wait to finish that shit. Actually, oh. <laughs> you guys are gonna be fucking stoked. Yeah, you're gonna geek. You're gonna yeah. geek. <laughs> bro, this, I'm swear to goodness, bro. This cheeky, like this cheeky got me real. cheeky, bro. <laughs> I swear to goodness. Yeah. No, I'm really excited for the. Um, new track to come out with you guys all three of you guys on that and um the show obviously on saturday is going to go crazy this is going to come out probably i don't know three to four weeks after but yeah really appreciate you guys coming on to do the show with us coming to new zealand jumping on the podcast being a couple of, like really good guys and you know hey you're a good guy um, hey damn yeah. the fucking man <laughs> cole what, what was oh yeah Dan the Cheek. man. Oh yeah. Dan, we got, we got, yeah, we got Dan the man. We got Cheeky Cole. Magic Mike behind the camera. Hey, fool, chill out. Thanks for coming through. Um, Teddy Slugs, Wall of Colossus. Check them out in the descriptions. Go show them some love. Yo. <laughs> On behalf of Cheeky, we have. Oh, oh fuck. It's okay. I don't drink that much. Bro, I swear to goodness, let me let me tell you how Cheeky's changed my life, bro. All right, so it's like Christmas. It's Christmas, bro. Is this for me? For yeah. real? For real? No way, for real? For real? For these real? Are, we can walk out with these. Yeah. These are gonna be gone. Turn the cameras off. Like tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I need those back.